so I just wanted to make a video on fret leveling and fret dressing tools if you want to learn how to do it yourself and you don't want to spend you know, thousands of dollars on professional grade equipment um, because uh, good fret leveling is definitely needed sometimes and obviously if you have expensive guitars, vintage guitars, American made strats, Gibsons and whatnot, then you shouldn't cheap out and try to do it yourself. I definitely recommend having a professional qualified person do a fret leveling and there's even now uh, computerized fret leveling I can't remember the name of it right now but um, maybe I'll think of it by the time this video ends. Anyway so when you need a, a fret leveling is it's usually done after the installation of the frets because um, some frets might be higher than other, and the neck has to be perfectly straight. And it's always easier doing it on a bolt-on neck because you can put it on a fake body like this. When you do it on a glued-in neck or an acoustic, um, you have to carefully pad the body and clamp it down. And in some cases, like with a classical guitar, it's a real pain because there's no truss rod, so you have to kind of weigh down the body with weights and whatnot. It's it's a real pain. Uh, so that's another reason why, if you have expensive um, equipment, you know, don't cheap out. Just find a good tech and have them do it. Um, another reason you might have to need the frets level is occasionally, just over time, the wood might swell in certain areas. So. I found it very common, um, actually, in a couple of guitars so far on acoustics, where the second fret will have gotten higher. So when you try to play in the first fret, it's buzzing, and then when you check it, um, the uh, I use this as a fret rocker. Even there's a couple of burrs on it. You know, uh, you'll be able to see which one's a high fret on it, and then it can be taken down. Um, other times, you might want a fret leveling is if you buy a well-used guitar. And there's lots of deep divots in the frets from the major areas where it was being played. And because those areas on the fret are lower than the, uh, the upper frets, it'll buzz on those particular notes. So I once bought an, oh, I didn't buy it, but I worked on a, a family member's old acoustic that they had bought. It was a really nice uh, guitar, but it had really deep divots on it. And even the previous owner had filed, just roughly filed down the upper higher frets because nobody really plays that much on an acoustic up on the higher frets to make it playable right in here um, so I went ahead and I measured the what I usually do is measure the lowest divot and to see is it is that too low to take them all down to that level so that they're all to make sure I'm not taking it down too low that it that it can be done without um, being a waste of time and on that case I was able to do it um, so one of the things I, I rec recommend um, is to get the Stu Mag DVD on Fret Basics. They do make a couple more DVDs. Um, you can get the books. It's kind of hard to get an idea just from these books. Although these are really good books from uh, Dan Earlywine. Um, I definitely recommend them. Because um, what's good about his the books and the videos is not everything is in the books are in the videos and vice versa. And in the, the books he shows you how to make your different... Um, fret files if you, if you want, you know, the leveling files. And if you're going to do this, you want to make sure you're looking at the files uh, at, at the store and check them with something uh, to make sure they're perfectly flat. So most of these have a look, they're not perfect, but I don't use them that often. But I've marked them bases angled, you know, so that I know that this not, it's not perfectly flat. And I just color-coded mine um, so that the red ones are the single cut and the orange ones are the, the more rougher double cut. But... I don't really use them that often. Um, this is the main Stumac, Stumac um, leveling two-foot bar, and I just bought this to true up all my other homemade tools, and I'm going to go over those in a second. This is the two-foot one with um, shipping is about 80 bucks, so I was kind of putting off getting this, but I work on mostly cheaper stuff, you know. So the accuracy of my other tools, I was pretty confident with them working on them. Probably the most expensive guitar I worked on was an Epiphone Elitist SG, which is basically a, a Gibson because it's American-made parts assembled in uh, Japan. Um, so, for example, on my first, because um, what you basically do is you you want to clamp it down and adjust the truss rod and 
prop the neck as you have to to get the neck perfectly straight. So you need to have um, straight edges. And you can have, I brought these out just to check them against the bar and they're kind of wavy. So I may true them up, I may leave these, I may get some other rulers that might be easier to sand because these are stainless steel. At least they look like stainless steel. Um, as far as putting that and you would put a bright light behind it. Um, but to go over straightening the neck, you need notched straight edges so you can make sure that it's perfectly um, straight. And I made ones with just from these yardsticks in the painting section from Home Depot. And they don't always carry them. you got to look around for them. Sometimes they, they run out. And some of them are really badly warped. So try to pick out ones that are fairly straight. Um, if you don't have something, try to find something to, to straighten them against as far as sanding. But uh, without something like this, um, you need something definitely to check the, the straightness of them all. And then I just marked ones and make sure you make sure you, the parts that you cut out that you paint them with something so the moisture doesn't get in there and get them all uh, blacked out. But these were these are pretty accurate. I haven't said about uh, getting them trued up, but this is the Strat scale, 25 and a half inch. This is one I made for a base. Um, this is a for Harmony Electric that I did. I think it's 24 inch. And then this is just a regular ruler. Um, I think that's probably when I, they ran out of the uh, sticks when I went back to the store. And this is the Gibson scale, the 24 and 3 quarters. And this is probably the one I have the least confidence in right now. So I haven't I haven't checked it against the steel bar. But you could do them out of these uh, rulers as long as it's long enough and you cut the notches out of them. But just make sure to spray it with some sort of sealant so the moisture doesn't get in there. And for leveling... Actually, the very first thing I leveled was a classical guitar, a cheap classical guitar that was really bad, and I didn't have any of these tools. Uh, so I used a piece of plywood, um, put a little, glued a little foam there, and doing that was hard because I had to put weights on, put some sandbag weights on the, the shoulders of the guitar, and I think this is a 100 grit paper, and I just held on to this just as a, just a large file, um, but that's basically what I did, and then used the, the other grits on there, and I went ahead and left this this grid on there just to use for other purposes. But you could use that as long as it's fairly straight, you know, and you're working on an old beater guitar. This might be good enough. The other ones, these are five dollar levels from from Lowe's, and uh, I just chose whatever side was the straightest from looking at it, and that's why I see these little arrows on there to point towards the best side, because you're not you're not using the whole two foot level. Um, what I noticed with, um, and the advantage of having a couple is because you can go ahead and tape up. It's kind of a uh, pain cutting up the sandpaper. I usually do it the day before that I do a leveling. And um, I'll cut it up and mount it. As you can go ahead and put on the different grits. Uh, I have them all ready. You don't have to keep untaping the same bar. Um, most of the time you're only using a couple grits anyways for these, for these larger ones. Um, so I haven't... And plus those are light too, but um, the advantage of this one, I'm going to start using this one, maybe cut this up to maybe 18 inches or 16 inches, um, is you're not having to push down so hard on it. But I'm going to make this into one, because this one's actually pretty straight, uh, nice and flat, now that i checked it with the bar. Um, what else? Um, yeah, because the, the other next size lower bar with this one, with the steel bars that they make, because they're expensive, is about 16 inches so this is 16 inches here and you'll notice the camera back um, it's just a little bit shorter that I like to have the entire bar there so you're just moving it a little bit and you're definitely all straight all the way up and down so they sell a bar that's like this that's 16 inches like this so it means you're gonna be rolling off but I guess that's probably meant so that you're just moving it more that way. So I may make one make one of these plastic ones or this one into a 16 inch, but I would prefer the 18 inch, this is 18 inch, to make one that's about 18 inches. Then you know you're definitely, well, I'll probably put on tape on around 17. But of course that would be a little problem if you had pickups in there, you may have to take the pickups out if it's a guitar that that's glued in next. But that way you're, you're leveling and whatnot. Um, but you can be leveling. There's a whole technique to it I'm not going to go into.